Hey everyone, Pratik here. As you know, as a retoucher, I have to make sure that my skin tones are flawless. And when you're dealing with high volume images, it can become really tedious in order to do that. This video is gonna be showing you exactly the settings that I use personally to make Infant Unify as easy to use as possible and get the best results quickly. Now this example by Basam Sabah is fantastic because it shows you a variety of different issues. Whether it comes down to saturation, whether it comes out different colors, we're gonna fix that. Let me show you how. First, before I do that, I'll show you the end result that we're gonna to work towards. This is a very general idea and everyone can modify that to their taste, but it shows you that anything's really possible with this tool. Okay, I'm gonna delete that and we're gonna start from scratch and show you the ins and outs of it really quickly. And again, this is gonna be a video showing you my favorite techniques and tips on using it. If you're looking for a full overview, overview video, I'm gonna link that in the comments so you can see everything about the program or the plugin, I should say. Okay. First and foremost, we're going to go ahead and right click on the create button before you do anything at all, because this is going to give you a secret settings option. Firstly, I'm concerned about the opacity. So I like to keep the opacity of the results that it generates to 40%. The reason for that is if you have the opacity being too high, it's going to make everything perfectly uniform. And normally with actual skin, things are not completely uniform. There's subtle variations that are still underlying that. So off the bat, it gives you a 40% opacity for what it generates, and you can adjust it later on as well. So you're not tied to it, but off the bat, it just gives you better results and more realistic results. Next, what I like to do is at the bottom here, just settings wise, make sure that nothing is enabled. Like if you enable it, you can click on it, it'll turn white. Make sure nothing is white except for this middle option here. This middle option here is the ability to create a black mask when it generates the results. The reason I really like that is because when it generates the results, I can then manually paint in the areas that I want to and not have it <laughs> spread across the entire image unnecessarily. It'll just make it really simple. And that's it. Now what I'm gonna do is before hitting create, I'm gonna click on the lasso tool. You can actually use any selection tool. I'm gonna use the lasso tool because I'm gonna freeform select what I'm looking for. And what I'm gonna be selecting here is the exact highlights, shadows, and midtones that I like in this image already. For example, over here on the shoulder, which in the image typically the shoulder or um, some of the collarbone or arm has tones that I want reflected and represented across the rest of the image. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna come over here to the shoulder. I like this highlight color. It represents most of the highlights. Obviously it's you know quite white and straightforward. I like the shadow color here, it's really dark, and the midtones here are fairly neutral as well. So I'm just gonna select a sample like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a little swatch like that. And then let's say, for example, you want to select um, something else somewhere else. You can do that. You can hold shift on your keyboard and you'll see that plus sign come next to that lasso icon where my mouse cursor is, and you can see Again, if I hold the plus sign or shift down, the plus sign goes and comes depending on if I hold it down or not. So what you want to do is make sure that plus sign is visible while holding shift down. And then you're going to do another selection here. Let's say that I liked this uh, highlight here. I'm just selecting that just to ensure that it knows that I like that highlight color. And that's it. You can do this as many times as you want. Like if you're like, oh, I like that color here too. Perfect. You know, you don't have to, but it's good to know. And that's just a quick tip because sometimes all the colors you like are not in the exact same place. Now, once that's done, I'm going to let go of shift and then I'm just going to hit create. And what's going to do is analyze the colors that I picked. And then it's going to make a layer for me here. As you can see, it says infinite unify and it has a gradient map here. You don't have to do anything with that, by the way. The, um, the gradient map is made. And what the gradient map does is it just, again, ensures that the colors between the darkest and the lightest parts of the image are the exact ones that you selected. And that is why it uses a gradient map adjustment layer for this plugin. And if you don't know anything about that, don't worry. You just have to start painting on the area that you find offensive and you're good to go. That is why we made it to make it as simple as possible. Next, I'm going to click on the actual brush tool. And for my brush settings, let's go ahead and make sure that it's at 10% just so that we can paint it in really um, slowly. And you want to just click on this icon here that just ensures that 
even if I don't move my brush around, it'll still keep painting and adding paint. Um, my smoothing is set to 0% and that's it. Don't worry about this one. This one should have been zero. Um, that's default. Okay, next thing is I'm gonna go ahead enter my brush settings here. Just make sure my hardness is set to 0%. It'll make it a soft brush. And now we're gonna just increase the brush size and paint everywhere that you believe needs to be fixed. For example, a quick one is going to be the fingertips here. You can see that they're quite red. So I'm just going to ensure that with a white brush here, I'm going to paint it in. And actually for this example, let's go and go to 100% so you can see the results really quickly. So I'm just going to paint that over. And to show you, I'm going to turn the on and off. So you can see that the red actually was a deviation from the tones that I liked. So it just nudged it into the zone that was very visually appealing for me. It nudged it into the zone of the colors that we had selected. So you can see that anytime you have a color that's really far away from what you like or what we selected, it'll nudge it into place. And anytime that you have a color, for example, that's too similar to what you've already selected, it won't change anything. It'll keep it exactly the same. It does a very good job at analyzing and interpreting exactly what you should do. This by hand, doing it by hand, that level of creative control takes a while, um, especially because even if you try to make a gradient map, what happens is that, and I'll show you, you can see here that the points are very, very specific in the location, the gradient map that they're in. This ensures that the results are very, oops, wrong, wrong button there. This ensures that the results are very good and accurate. Next thing I'll do is I'll come over here to the chest. It looks a little bit red. And you can just paint over some areas, even if you're not sure of, and it will visually guide you and show you exactly how to fix that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and maybe even paint on the arm a little bit here, you know, just because it looked a little desaturated. And um, that looks good. And next, I'm just going to paint over here. And you can see that because the original color is very desaturated, um, it actually brought it up and corrected it. So I'm just going to do that for now like that. This is a very rough work here, so keep that in mind. Um, if you by accidentally uh, go over a certain area that you're not supposed to, simply just make sure that the brush is set back to black and then you can paint over it. Because again, ensure that the mask itself is selected and then you can paint on it using the white or black paint color. So you just like that, I'm able to kind of unify the tones across this range. And the same thing will go over here. If I just paint over it, you'll see that it does a really good job and making sure that all those variable tones are fixed. This is really good for somebody that has a difficult time knowing exactly what colors to, how to fix things and doing it manually. Those, that can take a while. Now, another really cool tip is that if you do um, realize that it's actually too strong, maybe in the hand that you want to bring some back, what you can also do is switch to the black paint color, come over here to flow, drop that down to about, um, let's say like just a few percent, like five or 6%, and then just paint over the areas that you felt were too corrected. This is good in case you want to keep some of that realism that allows you to do that. Um, but again, totally optional. I just want to show you the quick tips on how to do that. Next is going to be um, how to create a second layer using Infinite Unify. For example, I think I like everything. looks pretty decent. But perhaps you want to create another Infinite Unify layer. What do you do? Well, there's actually something really simple that you can do. And again, I'm going to repeat the process of just selecting another sample. And then I want to hold Option on my keyboard, which uh, I'm on a Mac. Um, so you can try also using Alt or, Alt or control or something like that on a PC, and it should hopefully do the same thing. But I'm using option on a Mac here. I'm going to hit create. And if you do it correctly, what you'll notice is that it creates a second unify layer. The reason I like to do that is perhaps um, I want to take one area a step further. Perhaps I want to take the leg even further. And this is just for conversation's sake. I don't really necessarily want to, but let's just pretend I did. I'm going to bump up my flow to 100% really quick to show you an example of uh, what you can do with this specific layer. So now let's say that I you know, kind of painted it all in. You'll see here that my mask is showing that I've only painted on the leg. 
you can see that I've only painted on the leg and you know um, that to be true because of my mask. Next, let's say that you want to nudge these colors. Perhaps you find that, you know, maybe there it's a bit too red or you, your selection wasn't perfect and you want to change some of that hue or saturation, or this is where the panel interface comes in. Let's say that uh, over here where it says hue, you can use that slider left or right and you can see it shift. If I go left, it goes more red. If I go right, it goes more like uh, green, yellowish. And this is good because it allows you to really dial in certain areas because sometimes it might happen. Your selection might not be perfect. And even though that's the case, it's okay because now you have controls in order for you to do that. And normally, if you had to do that manually, like if you open up the gradient map here, right? And you had to manually try and do it, you'd have to ma individually adjust the hue of each of these colors. And that is really hard. But now I could do that manually and you can see these points up here kind of adjust based off of how I do it. And it does it all in one go, which is, which is incredible. Next is saturation. I can click on saturation and I can reduce or increase it. And this is good because sometimes shadows especially have a lot of saturation. Sometimes the entire image does, but this allows you to dictate how much or how little saturation you want. If you, for example, only want to adjust the values of like, let's say your um, shadows, maybe you want to adjust everything. Well, there's an advanced editor, which I'm going to link the entire description to in the uh, <laughs> link, the video to in the description. Or you can just right click on this bar here. And what it's going to bring up is this advanced gradient editor. The only thing I'm going to really quickly show you here is going to be the shadows of the saturations. So you can reduce the shadows here if you want. So you can see it drops the shadows down like that. Um, or you can also decrease the shadows uh, of the saturation of the highlights, which it also decreases here. So it really depends on what you want to go for. Um, but this tool really gives you the full option of controlling those elements. Okay. The rest, as I mentioned, is going to be in the description in the description for a separate video if you want to learn more about the advanced editor. But uh, that is overall kind of what I wanted to talk about. Now, you might have noticed that I have this folder here called Dodge and Burn. The reason I have that, right, is after I do, um, or I should say before I do my color evening work here, there's one component that you should really uh, keep an eye on. And for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group these two infinite unify layers into one. I'll call this infinite unify. And here we have this dodge and burn group. And before I turn that on and off, I'm also going to turn on this adjustment layer on top. This is just for uh, additional tips. But when I turn this on and then I turn off my dodge and burn, do you see how I brighten that leg a little bit before I did any of the unify work? The reason why this is important and the reason why I turn it black and white is because if you, for example, um, go ahead and turn these unify layers on, you'll see that there's something that's still not correct and you're not sure what it is. And the rest of it actually boils down to brightness and luminosity. For example, again, I'm going to turn this unifier off. And when I turn that on, now if you just squint your eyes, everything looks even. This also happens because of fall off. You know, you might have the subject blocking some part of the light that casts a shadow on the leg. And you really want to correct for that um, before the final color grading steps. So all I did was I just added a dodge and burn curve and just brighten that section up so that it's much more even luminosity wise, it's unified luminosity wise, before um, I then did the color evening. And that just makes it a lot better. So I hope this tutorial helped you understand um, how I personally use Infinite Unify and some of the quick tips and tricks in order for you to get the most out of the tool. Again, if you want to learn the full tutorial on how to use everything and all the functions, including dark, bright, all these other tools here, and the advanced color editor, a gradient editor, I should say, then please check out the tutorial in the description. And I'd love to hear what you think. Please leave a comment. And um, yeah, thanks so much. And I hope this really helped you out. 
Also, if you're looking to learn more about Infinite Unify, I've left a link in the description. It's infinite-tools.com. And you can also look at our other tools there. And to join our community, I've left a link where you can join our Facebook group and Instagram as well.